Hi, I'm Sean with SparkFun, and today we're going to blow up some capacitors. So we have three different types that you would normally see on your circuit boards that you might be using. You have a basic ceramic, an electrolytic, and a tantalum. And these vary in order from good to evil. Um, they have different properties, and as you can see, they are come in various different sizes. And they have different uses for what you might want to use them for. But the thing is, is what happens if you put them on a board and you have a little bit of uh, over voltage problem or a little bit too much current goes through them? We've got a power supply here that's going to be supplying a lot of volts to these capacitors. And all it's just going to do, we're going to crank it to 36 volts, which is way beyond the voltage rating of these capacitors. And we're just going to see what happens. So first of all, we have a ceramic hooked up here, and I believe we are at 36 volts. And we're about to shock the crap out of this ceramic capacitor. You ready? Three, two, one. Hmm, not a whole lot. The next one we have in store is an electrolytic capacitor. Now these guys actually have um, a bunch of stuff stored in there. We'll go with the magic smoke. So if you see magic smoke, it's probably one of these going up. Let's figure out what happens. You ready? And now we have the tantalums, and you will see why these things are evil if you overvolt them. Here we go. So one of the capacitors that we exploded is the ceramic right here. And they're fairly common, you can find them in almost anything, and they have fairly low capacitances. Um, they're pretty reliable though, which means that they can tolerate pretty high voltage spikes, and you can find them at 6.3 volts, 10 volts, 16 volts, all the way up 50 volts and beyond. Um, the nice thing about them though, even though something might be rated like this one here at 16 volts, they can actually tolerate two, three times that in minor spikes. And if we test them here, we can see that he's actually still looks like an open circuit at two mega ohms, which is good. So so even if he has failed, then he's still open. Um, I still wouldn't use him, but what can happen at some of the higher voltages is that your dielectric will actually break down and your electrons will jump between the plates. So it can look like a short, but we're talking 100 volts or so for that to happen. So another capacitor is this electrolytic that we did. And this one had a nice puff of smoke come out of the top of it. Um, as you notice, they're actually scored across the top to allow that smoke to release whenever the pressure gets too high because of an over voltage or a reverse voltage situation. Electrolytics are great for storing a lot of very big charge. They usually come on the order of several hundred microfarads, um, and they come in these big cans, or sometimes you can find them in surface mount. However, they are susceptible to reverse polarity. Uh, that being said, they can tolerate some spikes. As you notice when we went to explode it, it took a little bit of time once I hit the button for the cap to pop. So we're going to see if it fails open or fails short. Hey, it, look, it's still open. So at least it doesn't damage your circuit if you're using these as a decoupling capacitor. These are tantalum capacitors, and everyone seems to love these. They offer a huge capacitor value, so you can find them on the order of several hundred microfarads in a tiny, tiny package. They are great for decoupling and doing bulk decoupling. However, they are prone to explosions, as you previously saw. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, not only are they susceptible to reverse polarity voltage, so if you give a negative voltage to it, they explode, just like you saw, and they don't tolerate spikes at all. Um, as soon as I hit that button, that thing bursts into a fireball. When they fail, two ohms, they fail short. So if you're using these as a decoupling capacitor, you're gonna have an immediate short on your circuit and that's not gonna look very good for your power supply. So a couple things to keep in mind here. First of all, you always wanna derate your capacitors. What that means is it says a maximum voltage level of 6.3 volts and you use something at five volts, that capacitor is gonna be easily susceptible to any sort of over voltage or spikes that might come across your lines. So you generally wanna go two, three times above what you're expecting to see. So if you're working with five volt lines, you wanna use a capacitor rated for 10 volts or 16 volts or anything above that and you're probably gonna be okay. That being said, I highly recommend avoiding tantalums if you can avoid it because as you saw, they are evil and they explode with fire and fire is bad.